Ho, ho, ho. It's nearly Christmas. That's how it's I said a- about Christmas. <laughs> Are you not loving it? I'm trying, Jen. I'm trying real fucking hard But here. this was going to be your year. You were getting all festive and you have your, your rose gold and your copper de- decorations. I got stars for buying the TV. I'm really trying. You're, you're right now breaking me hair now. I'm just trying. I'm tired. Okay. Hit it! <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome along to the Unpopular Opinion Podcast. My name is Jen. And my name's Carla. We just did a really fucking long interview for you. Who? Yes, we did. Uh, I got skilled today on Real Housewives. And if don't, fair enough, if you don't watch Real Housewives, because neither, neither do you. I. <laughs> and we spoke to Connor Bean for over an hour, over two about other stuff, but yeah. over an hour about Real Housewives for the purposes of this podcast. Um, because we're coming into silly season and we're coming into time off work, and it would serve you well if you were doing nothing else and you wanted to try and get into it, get into it now while you have a bit of time off work. Mm-hmm. You can also catch us on Patreon if you have, you know, listened to everything. Mm-hmm. You've got a bit of time over Christmas. We got five extra episodes a month. There's over a hundred episodes on that bad boy right now for you to listen to mm-hmm. your listening pleasure. And um, it's just a bit of crack over there, isn't it, Jen? It is. A little bit loose. A little bit loose. But mm. with all that said, all I said, please enjoy the attached. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an email. Please see attached our interview with Connor Bean. So of course, um, if you are a patron of our podcast, you will <laughs> know this face quite well and uh, you will know this voice quite well. And if you are a Housewives stan, we hope you know this voice quite well because we have the amazing Connor Behan from Housewives of Me with us. Hello, gals. How are we doing? Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on again. It's a storm. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> delighted. Yeah, we're in the middle of a storm. Nothing yeah. more like comforting during a storm than talking about my favourite topic. So I'm very excited to be here. And uh, we were kind of, because Carla at the before we started um, recording, was like, "Um, because you don't really watch these things. And I was like, well, this would be an educator for me because for anybody who's listening who hasn't listened to them and want to get into it, you can kind of introduce us or tell us, like, where's the best... Because that's one of my things as well, is, like, I don't know where to start. Mm. Yeah. I want to be... It's daunting. yeah, Yeah, I want to, like, know all of the reality TV and I'm just like... I'm going to get my house soon, which means I'm going to have my own space and I'm going to be able to do these things and I just want to know where to start. Watching TV after 8pm, crazy. Um, Madness. <laughs> but before, if you guys haven't heard of Connor, Connor, tell us a little bit about, um, you were pop obsessed and then you came up with your yes. new baby. Um, so you've yes. been in this, you've been in this shtick for a while. Uh, yeah, so I work with 2FM covering shows there, covering the entertainment news, covering the shows across the schedule, obviously with DJ in places like The George. I still do that even after the last year and a half, which is miraculous, just about. And then obviously I was one half of the podcast Pop Sess with my friend Holly Shortall, which we did with Virgin Media and Expose. And then in the last year I have been hosting, producing, editing and doing everything myself for the podcast Housewives and Me, which is like a deep dive into each each guest each week it tells me about their journey with the shows and what ones they watch and which ones they love and we get into their housewives viewing habits we've had everybody from yourself on to samantha mumba elizabeth day evan ross Katz. so it's been a really fun mix of people from ireland and from abroad who just who are all at different stages of their housewives journey some people have been watching for 10 years some people have been watching for six months and they all really want to talk about it so that's been really fun to do and you're sponsored by hey you which is like oh such a perfect my like God. i squealed <laughs> and that was the day after we had recorded our last patreon episode yeah that you oh, made yes. the announcement and i was like that little arsehole didn't fucking say a word <laughs> <laughs> do you know it was like one of those things until it was like announced i did i knew it was happening but you just don't you feel like you can't say because you want to jinx it so until mm. it was like fully out there it's like oh i can breathe now which is just i'm just like that as a freelancer like i've done so many random bits where you think it's going to be like huge and never gets released or you get asked to do something and then it never actually happens so when now that it's out there i'm like yes hey you do sponsor the show which is mad because i truly am the first ever subscriber no like that's that's not a lie that's actually the truth so like that alone it's just like (laughs) it's just so random i was like i had that alone we're we're made to be together in sponsorship forevermore that is, so how do you how did you know that? Because obviously I'm not into the reality TV scene <laughs> as much as I want to be. Like, were you notified? Did you how 
Did you become, How did you become number course? one? Yeah. How did you become <laughs> zero, zero, one? So what happened was it was a good five or six years ago now. I was doing like a day or two covering the entertainment news in Twitter. I was covering Lottie Ryan for some random week. This is years ago. And I was trawling internet for stories for bulletins on air on 2 of them because you have to do a new bulletin every hour. So like you're constantly looking oh for stories. And I was, I saw a story, I think it was on Digital Spy or somewhere like that going, there is a new streaming service launching for fans of reality TV, including the Real Housewives. And my ears immediately pricked up because at the time I was trying to find everything online myself. Oh, the links. Like, back such in a the pain. Day. <laughs> and it's exactly dodgy links that are paying the hole and really bad for your laptop. Like they're, they mm. totally give you computer viruses. So I saw this and went, that sounds like a bit of me. And they're like, it's going to be real housewives, below deck. But, but they were saying what networks in the US were putting their shows on it and who owned it. I was like, wait, that's shows I watch. I'm so in. So I went to like, the placeholder website was there and sent, you know, gave them my email to let me know when it launches. And then, one evening, probably like a few weeks, if not a month later, I was doing stuff on my laptop around, I think it was like half five or six o'clock. And I saw an email being like, hey, you is now live. Like, take a look at our library and see what you think. So you could, and if you remember there's a period where you go on a website for a streaming service and it wouldn't tell you what they actually had. Yeah. Which oh go join God. now and see the library. And I'm like, show me what's in the library. So I remember you could go on Hey you, at this point and like, scroll through what they had and i realized they had everything, everything. that i wanted to watch and like i know they sponsor me now but like this is years ago like i hadn't mm. even signed up at this point so i'm not saying this from a sponsor place and i just went that's a bit of me and i just signed up instantly thinking like oh they've launched today like i did not think i was the first one and then a few years later i was working on a project that hey you were involved here that didn't end up happening for various reasons but i met some of the team when they were in ireland and they were like you know that you're the first person who ever signed up to hate you. And I was like, oh, sorry. They're like, yeah, like that day um, when we launched the website, like we sat there and it was good to go. And we were like, we've launched the streaming service. Wow. And we waited for the first name to came in, come in and yours just popped up. And so apparently for years, like in the office, they'd be like, oh, do you think Connor Bean would like this? Because no, in my head, I'm the ideal no customer way. because I was like the first person to sign up. So it's just so... It's just so random because I knew I was an early adapter when I saw mm. the email because I had been keeping an eye on the news story about it, but I did not think I was the first one. You didn't think yeah, I don't know who the, don't know who the first Netflix user was. Don't know who the first Amazon Prime user, the first Now TV yeah. user is, but I know the first hey, hey user is. It was me. You are a patient it is zero. Me. You're a patient yeah. zero. Yeah. I think <laughs> a patient zero. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think what's crazy about Hey You as well is that the biggest the biggest grab for me. So I've been watching. I mean, like. My obsession with reality TV goes back to like obviously MTV and all the dodgy ones mm. that they used to do there. But the big get, the big buy in for me was um, Housewives and Vanderpump Rules, which were like my two big reality shows that I used to watch religiously day in, day out. So I think I joined Hey You in 2017. And I remember being shocked at the catalogue on it too. Yeah, they just have so, I mean, I, I know this sounds like an ad, it's not an ad, but just. They've so many, it's like they had Hey Paula, the one season wonder yes. reality show that Paula Abdul did, which is truly one of the weirdest shows we'll ever watch. Like they just have this, it's basically, it's owned by NBC Universal who own networks like E and Oxygen mm. and Bravo. And so it's a lot of the shows that air in those networks that they own. So there's a lot of true crime. There's all Below Deck, Housewives, Pump Rules, Top Chef, um, like, I mean, obviously they have all of Keeping Up with the Kardashians and all the spinoffs. So there's just like hours of like the kind of shows that you would put on on a hangover sunday if they were on tv but like or to watch whenever watch. so yeah. yeah it's hangover sunday vibes whenever you need them <laughs> yeah they've like very Caval cavalary and like all yes. that kind of stuff which i always found because that was my big like back in the day it was me and my macbook fighting against the world do you know what i mean it was like trying to find links for mm. things and you'd get a really good like you'd get a really good link for one of the housewives but you wouldn't get one for, for the next episode. like the next episode or Vanderpump Rules. And you'd be like, cool. So I'm just going to have to go around my four different dodgy sites here. Mm -hmm. Try and rip yeah. the link. And Loads of pop-ups. Lots of, a lot of, for some reason on all these illegal sites, there will be a lot of dodgy porn pop-ups. Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I have seen that. the Eastern European women's boobs a lot just to watch one episode of Real Housewives. They're like, click now to see my tits. I'm like, I don't really <laughs> don't want like, to. Oh, that's not me, girl. I've seen you know a lot of memes. Not tea. your audience. It's, yeah, <laughs> It's not a meme uh, online. It's like a famous pop up that you always get is <laughs> my husband has died. I only want sex. Click here to see my pussy. And it's like some random stock image of a hot woman. But it's like it's always memed online with different yeah. photos of people. <laughs> that was the ads you got if you were watching stuff yeah. online a few yeah. years ago. And that was you. 
<laughs> Sorry, that was so vulgar to say yeah. that, but I, I just it's a me- beautiful memory. It's yeah. just it was a memory from <laughs> it was a moment in time. Yeah. It was a moment. So you uh, birthed <laughs> Housewives and me then from your obsession yes. with Housewives, mm-hmm. um, and you just kind of have cool guests all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm so so lucky with the guests and people like there are some people who I would just I just happen to know from years of being online. But there's people like Elizabeth Day who I just completely asked on a whim, thinking she's asked to do like she hosts a podcast, How to Fail. She's a very successful author. Like she's asked to probably do a million podcasts. But I think the thing is, I'm asking people to come on to talk about something they don't always get to talk about. And like Elizabeth Day was like, "Oh, are you joking? It's an excuse to talk about this for an hour, of course." Whereas on other podcasts, you're like maybe the tenth one that day that wants them to talk about their life, talk about their mm-hmm. book or whatever. Whereas people are so thrilled to talk about this in detail because I just notice every time I have a guest on, they all have they all say something I wouldn't expected or they'll say something I'd never thought of, which is amazing. But also they don't get to have these chats in their day to day all the time. Yeah. So they're really thrilled to be like, oh, my God, you know what I think about someone? So and I'm like, tell me, come here yeah. and tell me. We talk about the way people talk about sports which obviously it's a huge part of people's lives and that's great but like there's sports coverage on every big radio station and all the newspapers it takes up so much of the cultural conversation yeah so if you're really into football or whatever you know you can find people to talk about it with whereas i think people who are into these kind of shows are like i want my people i want my football fans so mm. we find each other and we have our little nerdy chats i mean there's tons of american podcasts that do this but not so many over here no yeah. and it's lunchroom chats with kind of a i can't like a, a an Irish spin I suppose in a way mm-hmm. that like obviously you yourself are Irish but a lot of your guests are too so it's kind yeah. of like nice to blend what we think and you know the notions of the housewives versus you know in America it being ten a penny what's mm. interesting before we get into it as well is that we just um recorded an episode on um my leave it in you know, the way I do my little, like, leave it in 2020, leave it in 2019, yes, whatever. Yes, so, iconic, yes. We wait little, for it every year. We wait for it every year. And this year it's coming to you in podcast form. But, um, <gasps> yeah, I know, what can I say? Me and Jen pulled it out the back. <laughs> uh, but one of, my, one, of my, one of my leave it in 2021s was stop acting like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is your personality. <laughs> You've watched it once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen people be like, you know, I'm always banging out the hairs. I'm like, not in my feed, you haven't. Yes! Been. Where were you? <laughs> where were, where you? were you when yeah. Kim was revealed to be an alcoholic in a limo 10 years ago? Actually, I'll tell you where you weren't here. Uh, you weren't here from the start. <laughs> I know. And it's so, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like, I'm trying not to judge, but like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. I, I like people you? coming to it new. Like, that's exciting to me. But I have noticed, like, some people really want to have think they have the hot takes and they get it all and I'm like you just won't get it after a year like it's one of those weird as in you will get it but like if someone's been watching it for 10 years plus they've watched it every week for so long that like they just have a different relationship to it whereas the people who've binge watched a ton of it they definitely have hot takes and I love hearing them but like sometimes I'm like wait 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 this time 12 months ago you didn't know any of these women were yeah <laughs> like, exactly and you're like, you know I've it, is, like, it is funny <laughs> I've watched like all of the transformations I've watched the divorces I've watched all that other stuff like when they thought right. they were in love with x y and z um and it's even funny because like one of my best friends is like you know she doesn't miss a series she doesn't miss an episode and we'll just be having again our lunchroom chats and she's like no Carla no 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 you don't get it because blah 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 and I'd be like oh I don't even get it and I've been watching this show for yeah. like again I think I've been watching it since 2011 so I've been watching it 10 yeah, years now yeah. it's crazy people get so um it's it's such a like way of seeing how somebody sees the world which sounds so stupid but like the way you might feel about x y and z on a show versus how i might feel or who gravitates to what what person or when there's an argument or falling out who's on what side of the argument i always find that so interesting because it does say a lot about a person like it does it's like when you talk about celebrities you know someone thinking megan fox and machine gun kelly are the couple versus someone being really into like i don't know i'm trying to think of another big celebrity couple Trump, moment. chris martin right <laughs> like some you know yeah. or even like holding a torch for a couple that aren't even together anymore like yeah. it does say a lot about someone's taste or their personality or their it's point of view so perspective and stuff yeah. you can judge yeah exactly so it's really interesting yeah mm-hmm. so with all that said i think um mm-hmm. you know we've got connor who's like the guru me mm-hmm. who is very selective about my housewives and then we've mm-hmm. jen who's never watched it never watched it i <laughs> never was like watched. i watched and what Dublin Where? Housewives. Go away, go away. YouTube. Oh, you watched Dublin Wives? Yeah, on because I saw your your uh, you put it up on Twitter. 
you're like the world what was the thing you said the, the this world is me where it. it's like we used to be a country yes. a real country <laughs> i don't even know where that means started but i find it so funny and you're like they're <laughs> posting up to my ex-wife. but um like i have my own personal opinions about this but what do you think is the best like beginner housewives to get somebody in because it's a very overwhelming catalog yeah i mean we were joking about how it's kind of become a bit of a watchword or a buzzword the last year but Beverly Hills is a good place to start in that by the time that had kicked off about 10 years ago, they had done a number of housewife shows and they knew what the format was. So Mm -hmm. you get the interviews to camera filmed a certain way. You get a certain level of glossiness and a certain level of budget. Whereas the earlier seasons of other shows are really great, but they're very of their time visually and just pacing wise, whereas Beverly Hills hits the ground running from the start. A newer show that is only two seasons in, but has been explosive and eccentric and really unexpected is Housewives of Salt Lake City. So that's a good starting point too, because you could jump in with that and kind of just see how you feel about the format. But the funny thing, and you'll agree with this, and anyone who's watched more than one city will tell you is on paper, you might see similar logos and the branding being the same, but each city or show is very different. So the vibe on Beverly Hills is very different to the one in New York. Atlanta is different to New Jersey, etc. So I think to get an overall feel for the franchises, and to go back in time a bit, Beverly Hills is fun because, you know, those early seasons are 10 years old and it's all like the fashion and everything is dated really horribly already. Yeah. But if you were like, want to start with something that's a bit more current and there's only two seasons and you want to just feel a little less overwhelmed, I would suggest Salt Lake City as well. I think with Salt Lake City, uh, it's a different kind of, I think it was an interesting choice because I was expecting something I was expecting a different very city. Very random. A very yeah. random. But it's because of the whole Mormon esque side of things and also you know the beauty of housewives shows is each one feels specific to that place or like it gives you something that at the very least the the production company have decided is going to be the specifics of that place so that one religion is a huge factor and it's so funny there are people who are mormons on the show there are ex-mormons who have had a really rough time leaving the religion Mm -hmm. behind and it's Mm -hmm. made a huge dent in their life you have housewives who are muslim you have housewives who are jewish and christian on the show so you actually have such a mix of and they it's not the full extent they still have fancy outfits and glamorous trips and cat fights and stuff but they talk about religion and their relation to religion a lot more than other cities so that in and of itself is and kind of a stands out also it's set in a place that's snowy and kind of in a way remote and very specific and they all live in these villas and chalets that are like miles away from each other so visually it just feels mm. so different to all the other cities which i think is why it actually works and whoever made the call to go there was right because I think when it was announced everybody went to the city of where watching it now you're like oh okay actually it makes sense they found a group of people who are a bit mad and want to be on camera and they found them in a place that hasn't been in this lens before so it's really yeah. it's really it's a very eccentric show they're all the shows are a bit weird all the house shows have their they are all weirdness weird, to them they? but this <laughs> one it's like there's a woman who's running this Christian church who they're alleging could be a cult leader. One of them has now been accused and was arrested for allegedly scamming all people in a telecommunications fraud scheme. One of the women is barely able to enunciate and, you know, is annoyed that her possibly gay son has been trolled. It's just, if I tried to write these storylines, mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, it's just a bit much, isn't it? But yes, yeah, somehow it actually happens on these programs. No, I know. Yeah. And like, I mean, you also have to remember that you have somebody who married their... <laughs> Their their granddad their their step step granddad, step granddad <laughs> okay. which was their granny's dying wish. Okay. So if you this you're you're sitting down episode one, I was like, whoa, right? Yeah, they they really said here's here's the play, you know, here's how things are playing out. Come on board if you want. So yeah, that's why Salt Lake City is a good one to start with. Or I mean, Beverly Hills, those first few seasons are really iconic, and they they're just full and they they live so lavishly on that show yeah. that it's just such how the other half live property mm. porn as well yeah. yeah okay it's very interesting. which season or city would be best for the chaos and the drama oh that's a good question i mean in a way beverly hills starts off really strong but then as the years go on they're all off, afraid yeah. to really yeah. go after each other i think it's this is going to sound mad for people who've never watched but the Housewives in New York City, like from the start, is really interesting and fun and there's great characters on it. But as that show goes on, by like season seven, eight, nine, ten, 
that is just one of the shows where every episode something completely off the wall happens or like you know something is playing out almost in real time in a way that you know they couldn't have predicted so it probably sounds mad to be like oh by the seventh season it gets good because the early seasons are great but the beauty of housewives as a format is the longer you watch the more it pays off it's kind of like you know people who watch the soaps someone who's watched curry they've probably watched it their whole life so when curry has an amazing run of say six months to a year or a long-standing character gets into some huge pickle you as an audience are going i have grown up with this character or this show or this family who are on the show mm. it's really paying off and there's something similar with housewives if you watch enough of it like later on in housewives in new york there's a five-year period where every you're just like this is book wild and also on atlanta as well like stuff happens in atlanta and the way they just will go off with each other it's just <laughs> it's just hard to explain so i think new york or atlanta were just sheer eye-popping madness Chaos. are definitely up there <laughs> right. okay yeah yeah see if you if you thrive off the drama and then i suppose like you were saying the longer you're watching it the more invested you are in them as well because you'll have your favorites you'll have your enemies you'll have like the people that you're rooting for and stuff like within anything yeah and also it's mad on housewives you know like i think initially when they there was there was interviews done with a lot of the producers for a book that came out recently called not all diamonds and rose and it's like a an oral history of the shows and they said that initially when they were doing them they thought oh every year we'll replace the cast and it'll be like a new cast kind of like how on competition reality shows yeah. you get a new mm, cast yeah. of like on bake off or drag race you get a new bunch of people every year but in housewives a lot of those people stay on sometimes people go after one season if they haven't really fit in but like mm. most of them stay on for years so like they a lot of them just change so much a because that's life but also they become famous they get divorced they have a kid or they fall out with their sister or they fall out with someone on the show who was their friend initially like they all change a lot and i think with the longer running cities like atlanta and new york there's just this thing where you're like god i've i've seen you go through an awful lot and you've gotten worse or you've gotten better or mm. i feel like you're not quite yourself here like it, it's really mad how you see an evolution like you know Portia Williams is a massive Housewives fan favorite and she was on Atlanta up until recently and she went from being on a show and being married to this guy and being this young woman who was very like ditzy and had no voice and didn't know what she was doing to this like really smart funny outgoing woman who was like protesting over the death of Breonna Taylor meeting Breonna's family and like protesting outside of jail sorry protesting outside like some building near where Brianna grew up and then getting arrested for it. And you just go, God, this is someone who's like putting their life on the line to do activism. Yeah. And like six, seven years ago was just like it did some reality TV. Like you just see so much changes in the lives of the longstanding players that like the more it goes on, the more you're like, oh my God, like this person, I've watched this person go through so much. I mean, I've barely moved from the sofa and they've had a whole, <laughs> they've had a whole life they have to me. <laughs> I think it's interesting how you say, you were saying earlier on about like how some of them almost become caricatures of themselves because they get that taste for like wealth and you know uber wealth now but not only that like free mm. stuff and being in the public eye and you know say somebody like Erica Jane who like even herself is like you know I was a housewife and now I'm you know I've got a makeup line I've got this I've got that she was like listing off all her accolades and I was like oh yeah I forgot about that but it was mm-hmm. like I'm successful I've yeah. been on Broadway yeah and you're like okay, okay cool. I'm gonna make up line it's like okay Erica okay and then <laughs> now you're like I'm poor but like, it's just yeah. uh, look at my fucking life yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like you're in a condo but in LA but, uh, but I think it's it's interesting seeing those kind of character arcs and finding a cast that like not nobody can relate to them but you can relate to in some kind of way um and i think particularly for a lot of people who be listening to this over the christmas period where you i mean everybody has time they've chocolate and time Mm -hmm. you know like that's the one thing that we all have (laughs) there's no excuse you hear me there's no excuse there's no excuse but and i know this is a really difficult question because i couldn't even answer it myself but who do you think has the best and over the years because i do understand cast change but who do you think has the best like ensemble cast like or what season do you think is a standout for like they casted that immaculately or um anything along those lines i think cast wise i mean i mentioned new york but there was a period where they were just in such amazing like flow with each other because they had uh, some of them had existing relations before the show and the re like again that season seven to kind of 12 period where like you could tell they were sort of hanging out a bit 
when they weren't filming, which is also mm. great too. Like I love when they pick up with the women and things have changed over the summer. They go, remember when you came to my party and you were like such an arsehole? I love that because it means to me, well, you would be doing some of this whether we filmed it or not. Yeah. Also, mm. I mean, it's a newer city. I mean, there's six seasons in, so it's not brand new, but Housewives of Potomac is such an interesting one because they have kept four of the original cast on up until now. And it's apparently those four are coming back for seven season, which is filming soon. And that's kind of unheard of. So like that, that's four people who've been, who have been through six years of filming a TV show together. So I think that's a great example of a cast where they've kept the core unit and added really interesting people as they went. So, and Potomac has really the last few years become a fan favorite, it, like in the, since kind of season three, every year it's been like, oh, you have to watch Potomac. I know it sounds like it's the middle of nowhere, but like when you watch it, you'll get it. So that's, that's a good example of a cast where they just gel. And it's like, they gel in the sense that some of them don't get on. They gel in the sense that there is history there and they gel in the sense that they all will still come together and film no matter what. Like that weird thing where on some shows they go, I will never yeah. be in the same room as blah again. I'm like, yeah, give it a week. Yeah, like, it's like, sorry, you will be in the same room. You can, you can be annoyed about that and you can kick up a fuss when you're there. But to be like, you won't see me again. I'm like, yeah, we won't because they won't bring you back. So yeah. like, it's like, sure. it's her. I love when they do this whole, like, it's her or me. And I'm like, cool. See you in two years. Yeah. 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 You. Like, well, yeah. it won't be you. Yeah. It's not you anymore. How'd you feel? Um, but I, I think that's always like one of the, one of the most diva ish things. And I think the wealthier housewives always kind of try and pull that. Mm. And I think what's really interesting, cause we'll talk about it in a little bit, but obviously they now have ultimate girl strip and that has kind of like changed the landscape again, I suppose, because you're looking at all stars casts, and yeah. uh, we've seen plenty of like all stars casts with different reality shows, mm. particularly competition reality shows over yeah. the years, um, and they either really work or they really don't. Like they flop so unbelievably hard, or they are like the things that everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. You know, reference all stars one and two, but um, <laughs> it's like one of those kind of things where you just can't get away from. But what I find really interesting about Ultimate Girls Trip is that some of them have awareness of each other and some of them have have no awareness of each other, which I think is really weird. Because if I was here shooting, you know, Real Housewives of Dublin, I would have an awareness of like Cork, Galway, Limerick. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you would. Yeah, it's funny. So the Ultimate Girls Trip is a brand kind of new show that started this year. And it's like seven or eight episodes. And it's a seven day holiday. And they brought women in from different cities. So New York, Atlanta, Beverly Hills, uh, Jersey, is there another city on? I don't know. There could be, and I'm not remembering. Anyway, they've put them together on camera in a way that's never happened before. So we've seen Housewives make friends across the cities, and we've seen them at press events and things over the years. But this is the first time that they're throwing them together on screen in this prolonged way. And also actually acknowledging that they are on a show. Yeah. They talk on yeah. Girls Group about, oh, on my show with so-and-so on Beverly Hills, we do this. Oh, on New Jersey, it's Melissa and Teresa who are like, sister-in-laws and hate each other and here's the backstory so it's really because as i said all the cities have a totally different flavor so when you put people from the different cities together they start saying things like we would never do that on our show or i can't believe that or i don't think i've seen that season of your like there and it's clear to who are like who's aware of themselves as a reality star and this ecosystem of other people and who's like ar so arrogant <laughs> ramona singer i know be like well, <laughs> i don't need to watch any of your shows because i'm me and i i'm a star like it, and it's also a look it's a really interesting even if you've never because i have friends who are watching girls who haven't watched all the cities at the respective cast members are from but they're still getting something from it because it is also a show about fame and talking about mm -hmm. fame and talking about like the way being famous has, because you've got Teresa Judice on Girls Trip and on New Jersey, she went to prison because her husband committed fraud. While she was away, her mother died. When she got back, her dad only really was alive for a couple more years. And she said a lot, like, I lost a lot of valuable time with elderly family members that I adored. So like, you now have this woman on a girl's trip in Turks and Caicos telling another woman, yeah, it was just hard to not see my parents before they died. And that's, and your head, you're like, that's because you did a fucking reality show. Like, yeah. you know, that probably wouldn't have come to light if she hadn't done the show. So like, it's, it makes you think a lot about fame. And I think, I don't know, I feel like because of Instagram and how like self-aware reality TV has become, we're seeing these really interesting conversations play out on camera that, would have been unheard of even five years ago. Mm. And I like that element too, because what I thought was really interesting is 
like you were saying, they've acknowledged that they're on a TV show and they've all kind of been bundled together. I find like the competition between each other hilarious. Like even Ramona, I know she's batshit crazy, but like even then she's like, my fa- like, of course I'm going to take the master bedroom. My fans want to see me in the master oh, bedroom. God, that's right, okay. And you're like, yeah, and she actually said, said that. I was like, that yeah. is so she said crass. it out loud. She said it out loud. Like, but they're talking about, you know, there's a possible leak and they're talking about the press and TMZ mm-hmm. and they're talking about, you know, somebody leaking information and how she fights and how the public are perceiving them on this girl's trip. I was like, oh my God, we're getting all of the juice. These are the conversations that we never get to see. We're getting the BTS. Yeah, we're getting behind the the scenes. It's like the Housewives group chat brought to life in the show. This is the shit you would talk about. Like they're probably filming some scene I talked about something over dinner. The camera's going down like, oh, can you believe so? And so I'm like, that's what we've wanted you to say yeah. on camera for years. And it seems like they've all kind of said like since that it was really relentless to film because usually on the regular shows, they'd be told you're filming dinner, meet us here, whatever. Whereas this was the cameras burst in the mornings and went to Europe. You know, you even yeah. see the camera crew and the setup around them as they film. So you're just like, I know they were technically on holiday, but like it was, it was a working holiday Yeah, <laughs> for mm. all of them. Yeah. And I think like, that's one of the things that, you know, we never really get with those casts is that you, you, you can hear them. And what I think is really irritating is when they go into like reunions and they're like, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. Cause something yeah. has broke about, they showed a bit of a story. Mm. More has broke on it. You know, it's always a, a divorce or happens divorce, or like someone, money. someone has allegedly been yeah. cheated on. They're like, I don't want to talk about that. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to talk about I don't, that. They're not talking about it, so yeah. <laughs> like, let's play ball here or don't be on the show. And this, yeah. they're kind of talking about like what it did to them as a person, what it did to their social media. And it was like, even they, like one of them starts counting like who has the most followers, which I yeah. just find right. like yeah. so mad. Mm. So I think like, I, I know, I know everyone on Ultimate Girls Trip apart from two. Like I've watched series of them. I haven't watched all in New York, yes. but who doesn't know Ramona Singer? You know, in that kind of way, I've watched bits and bobs in New Jersey and stuff like that. But uh, I found it really interesting, even so, even though I didn't know like all of the cast, I still yeah. found like it an interesting thing. So I'm like, you can almost go into that and be like, pick a mix. Like I like that personality or I like the way they talked about this and then kind of like pick up from that, I suppose. Yeah, and also, you know, listen, the beauty of it is, like I always say to people, like, obviously, if you get into Housewives and watch an early season and go with it, you know so much what's going on. They love previously ons and flashbacks and remind you about stuff. And on the girls' thing, they do this great thing where they cut to, like, these iconic moments on the respective shows that get mentioned in passing. So actually, it's kind of like a good summary or introduction to other cities you haven't watched. So, like, don't it's not... Tolstoy like they love to be like remember when this happened all the time so like you can like I have started loads of these shows on a random season that was just airing weekly like halfway through this show's lifespan I'm like yeah I get it like if you watch a few flashbacks it's fine like you know it's not like Game of Thrones where they're you know you have yeah, to put, you know, yeah, a family crazy. tree yeah. like it's not that deep as well I love these shows but like they do spoon feed you a lot of info that you would need yeah. or you can even just go like I know Teresa's like I invented table flipping and I'm like oh my god and I went to YouTube <laughs> and just re-looked at that scene and I was like, yes. oh, I miss it. But I'd never go all the way back and mm, okay. like, try and get into like what that meant. I'd just be like, yeah, you actually did invent table flipping. You kind of did, girl. <laughs> you know, kind of way, I'm like, yeah, you kind of were the first to do it. Um, I think this is an important question because okay. a lot of people, are, you know, we watch it for the wealth, don't we? But overall, who do you think is the most wealthy cast just off of appearances alone, I would argue that Beverly Hills cast because there's just a level of lavishness on that show that is like you could you could mute Houses of Beverly Hills and just watch it like like flicking through a high end jewelry catalog. It's just so flashy. The houses are huge. Like I always joke, like I love New York, but like you know, to live in New York is very expensive for everybody. So like on Houses in New York, they all have quite a bit of money. But they're all they're all still in apartments. Like yeah. no one owns a whole building because it's New York. Whereas on like <laughs> on Beverly Hills, they own massive estates and massive mansions. So I would say it's probably the most money is probably in Beverly Hills. But you know the Atlanta women are no slouches either, particularly because a lot of them have become so famous. Mm-hmm. So like it's probably Beverly Hills with Atlanta nipping at its heels. Although the Salt Lake City women really are yeah, they're, well. they're putting on some kind of airs. They're, you know it depends where they are too. I think if like. I mean, I would guess it's probably Beverly Hills, but there's other shows that are definitely nipping at their lavish heels. Yeah, it's like what it's like pitting the wealth again because it's so. 
obviously it's so you can't really be like oh no they're more wealthy but what i found interesting about salt lake city i was like you're not even known for money do you know what i mean i was like it's not like you know, like new york you're like people who are rich live there it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's expensive so yeah. you don't think about yeah but i mean there's there's pockets of wealth in all these places and also the more you watch them the more you think some of them are even on beverly hills are probably putting it on for us or the way in which they acquired their wealth i mean you could argue that all vast amounts of wealth are acquired through less than ethical means if you want to get really deep in there. But like, <laughs> there's definitely people where you're like, mm, I don't know how the fuck you pay for this. You yeah. know, you're like, I don't, this does not seem like it's going to last. Or you'll frantically Google them and you'll be like, that doesn't like make sense. Yeah, that doesn't seem that lucrative what yeah. their job supposedly is. It's like yeah, I'm always 32 like, mm-hmm. million, what? Like mm. 32 million is like me being worth 32 euro. Do you know what I mean? Like in, in, the, in some terms. And I yeah. always find that like there is that bit of competition. Again, particularly in, in Beverly Hills because it's real like, I bought an Hermes bag and it's like, I got a Mini Kelly and it's like, well, I got this and it's like, well, I got a fucking Ferrari and it's like, well, I just bought a Bentley and it's like just constant one upping but in a real like we are so happy for each other <laughs> when you know that they're not you know they're exactly. i mean yeah. they used to always on all the house shows flash up on screen how much things I were worth that. what they spent on them and they've kind of stopped there was an episode of everybody hills this year one of the new customers crystal had this really really expensive i think it was an hermes birkin bag that's like really like worth i want to say like if not hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars like like at least 20 or 30 K or something insane. So like the bag was just on her kitchen table and, and Kyle Richards kind of remarks on the bag. And then they did a like lingering shot and put up the price point. And I was like, that's like what people earn a year, like on a bag, mm, like, a bag. you know, so they still sometimes will hit you between the eyes of how much money is being spent. And you're kind of like, cool. The world's in free fall because of a pandemic and a global recession, but I'm so glad you have a Birkin bag. <laughs> like, you know, if you think about it, you're like, sound. <laughs> so like the minimum spend for a Birkin is 20K. Um, wow. So they start at 20K, but there's ones that okay. are like ostrich and, you know, all this, you know, things that are really not good for the environment or you know, mm-hmm. the world. Mm. Um, that kind of can go all the way up to like 200 grand. Um, which is absolutely insane. And what I found hilarious about the I'm mini- actually going to Google Crystal's bag. What yeah, you say do, do. Like- what I found funny about uh, the mini Kelly bags was like, I can't remember. It was Kyle and Dorit. It was between the two of them. I can't, I can't, I think Kyle had bought it, but Dorit wanted it or Dorit bought it and Kyle wanted it. And this was like, they were going, they were like, I have a mini Kelly. I want a mini Kelly. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what a weird name. And I was like, sorry, never- it's worth $95,000. Like, are you, that's sick. Anyway, sorry, kidding? carry on. Continue. But like, sorry. This is what I mean about these little, because like, obviously I'm into luxury handbags. So mm. I like, you know, that's kind of a part where I'm like, ooh. And I remember looking at like the Mini Kelly, which is a, a mini bag. Yeah. You know, it says it in the name. And I think they started 15 or 25. I can't remember exactly, but I remember being like, ooh, okay. Because the way they were saying it to each other was like, I can't believe you, not you paid that for that, but it's like, I can't believe you can afford mm. to pay that for that because when you're looking at like when I'm looking at my dream bag which is like a you know 10 grand Chanel bag I'm not looking at like I never even look at Birkins you have to go away you know what I mean I'm like I'll never yeah. see a Birkin I can maybe get a Chanel but I'll never see a bloody mm-hmm. Birkin like it's not a thing so when you look at their closets but then what I think is shit is because of this am- amount and like mass wealth you've had burglaries and now yeah. they're saying that they're going to change mm. kind of the format of filming because you know, it's like what happened on a lower scale. Look what happened to Molly May. Yeah. Yeah. And that big display of wealth. And, you know, all you're saying is like, come here and rob me, essentially. And then the shit thing is that display of wealth and showing off your home and the f- facade of your home and touring, giving us an in-depth home tour, either on House Eyes or if you're Molly May on Instagram, is how you make your living. Yeah. And it's how the wealth and the lifestyle sustains itself. It's like this self-fulfilling prophecy. So... I understand the argument that if you put it online, you're at risk of being robbed. Like it's a valid point, but also if they don't put it online, does the audience, the intention dry up and then they don't have their wealth. I mean, that's, Mm. <laughs> it's that phrase it's kind of like what's a, the fucking yeah. point if you can't show it off yeah like, exactly yeah. like that's and it's also part of like you know particularly for someone like molly may to go on a site cyber you know her whole thing her brand is like she's this young woman who's like made it and i'm a girl boss and mm. da, 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 da. and so i'm showing you all the spoils of my wealth and you realize well sure but like there are massive de- like downsides to that. i mean it's like that really snobby phrase 
money talks and wealth whispers, which is a way of saying if when you're really, really fucking rich, you shouldn't have to show it off, which is like, I mean, that's fully classes, but it's also like, I think it's a way of saying, you know, it's a way of protecting yourself as well so that you don't mm. get, but how, how that will play out on the shows, I don't know. I mean, I know in the Kardashians years ago, they were like, from, from years ago, they're like, oh, the establishing shots of the house you see are not their homes. Yeah, like yeah, you see yeah. inside their homes. And also a lot of them eventually ended up, like Kris Jenner famously did an architectural digest spread of the house she actually lives in because the house we saw on the show is like basically an office slash where they film. Like she actually doesn't spend all their time there. So like, yeah. I think the very wealthy who do reality stuff will start to split between, or they won't show all of their home. Mm-hmm. I don't, but then, you know, I watched Housewives OC and they brought back Heather Dubrow and she left the show just as she was wrapping up this mammoth house renovation. So her first episode back, there's like a five minute sequence of her being like, let me show you the t- round, show you the tour. And you're like, this is sick. Like, what is this? What is wrong with this woman? So like, it's still embedded in what we want to see in these programs. So I don't know how they'll not do it. Like it, it's, whatever about not showing on Instagram, but like if you're doing a TV show about your life, the expectation is to show off. Like, as you say, what's the point of having the money if you don't? show us yeah mm. like i yeah. want to see it like and i and that's kind of part of the part of the thrill and um, what's been interesting with cast is that they will recast and there's always kind of one girl who switches up the fashion dynamic and all of a sudden like in particular <laughs> again with beverly hills it was like they cast erica jane and now everybody's wearing latex or they're trying to be as outrageous as possible down to like the little chrome louis vuitton that they're carrying with mm. the, the, and, and i love it because i'm like ah! you know like when i see yeah, them getting in the pure, living, I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah. it's so visual but it's so funny like the last season of beverly hills like they shot it during co- the peak of covid in california and like you know california was hit very badly by covid and like at one point i think i think two or three of them got covid and the show had to film like there was one episode that where a lot of the chats were all just them on zoom d- discussing things because they couldn't film together or s- sending someone's back garden and shouting up at them on their balcony but like even that season that was the covid season they were kind of doing a lot of trips away to someone's second home their holiday home mm-hmm. or going to people's back gardens to have outdoor dinners which is a great way of using the lavish space that they have in that particular place but they were all getting so dressed up and it wasn't even to go to a gal or a function or no. a club. Mm. It was for each other. So they're walking into their friend's kitchen in head to toe Louis Vuitton or whatever. And they're like, oh my God, you're in the blah. And it's like to sit down and have poxy cocktails around a kitchen table. Like to it's film just, for two hours. If yeah. we did that in real life, if like Jen walked into record the podcast in head to toe Gucci, you'd be delighted. Be like, it's just me, babe. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, but on yeah. Housewives, they're like, oh, it's just the Louis Vuitton. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like yeah. they really are. It's mm. that cliche, you know, always it's such a, like, it's such a broad generalization. But the idea that women dress up for other women. Now, how true it is, I don't know. But you know, that sort of idea. Oh, it's true. It's so true. It, oh, like, it's so true. <laughs> the Housewives shows in particular, they take that to the nth degree, particularly mm. on Beverly Hills. They're like, oh, well, it's a fashion parade w- with all the other girls. It's not for the benefit of men. It's not for the benefit of even people in the room with them at a charity gala. Now, obviously, they know it's going to be watched by millions of people, but it's always so funny how even in a year where they could only leave the house, go to their friend's house, they all got so got, like, unnecessarily taxes. dressed up. I'd be like, yeah. I'm in sweatpants, sorry. I would <laughs> love to show up to a COVID fucking party with like a Chanel lounge suit on like I, yeah, it would suit you Jen. imagine it would suit you I, I think it would suit you iconic. massively and what I manifest think is that. Yeah. Manifest, I'm trying to manifest that's me New her. Year's resolution yeah. kind of. um but what I thought was interesting as well is that when they do have and again as we I know it keeps coming back to Beverly Hills but that just kind of did change a lot for people when you had mm-hmm. cast members like Teddy Mallenkamp and can I Denise, just say something yeah. it says not recording Oh, oh no, yeah, we're, we're on the deck. We have a thing here. Sorry, I just, yeah. I, sorry, that was just like the fear of God of that maybe <laughs> it wasn't. 40 minutes sorry. of nothing. <laughs> sorry, um, sorry, Kai, I, mean, I would no, never right. usually could have, I was like, no, oh we're fine. <laughs> sorry. 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 Um, sorry, so what I found was interesting, and I, you know, it's like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Bloody Ball Gas, but at the same time, they were the icons, they were the people that like started a, a lot of these kind of new trends, is that when they've introduced more low maintenance characters will we say like teddy mellencamp yeah. and denise richards that was like a big part of their profile it was like i'm a jeans and t-shirt kind of girl i'm a plain jane i like a backpack i like a you know if i can't wear it twice i'm not wearing it like these women mm. and it was always one of those things where it was like somebody would come out in this lavish display of like a mad outfit and it would cut to like all the girls reactions and then like their interview and they'd be like i don't get it 
<laughs> there was a lot of like Denise Richards first season was a lot of her being like these girls man like we're just going for drinks in the hotel mm. why are we so dressed up for Teddy Mellencamp who like you know is the daughter of John Mellencamp so she's like grown up around fame and celebrity but her whole thing was like I'm just a regular girl blah 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 try to do the I'm not like other girls thing and her mm-hmm. first season she's dressed quite normal like she's beautiful but like she's not getting into glam like her contemporaries and then her second and third season on the show she really was trying yeah. to do that because i think she felt well i'm here now i have to i mean across all the cities they almost always have like a housewife second season they invariably have some kind of glow up either they are trying they've had maybe their boobs done or they get a new haircut or they just like start dressing differently because they've seen themselves on the show and because they film reunions they have to watch the show you could argue some reality shows i could throw you into the mix and you'd never watch it back but we know now with housewives they do have to watch it back so they can comment on it and like give their feelings on what came up on the show so like that invariably means they take stock of their behavior and sometimes do more of it almost as we mentioned earlier to the point of being a caricature or they adjust and think oh i came across mean on my first season so i need to be really like soft this time so people like me or i need to dress more glamorous because i've seen myself back sometimes some of them like lose weight because they didn't like how they looked in the first time they're on which they shouldn't have to do but you know they all have a a thought process and that Mm. goes into it yeah i think when you look at yourself on tv like even you just saying it there my stomach did a flip Mm. I've never uh, this is like this is <laughs> yeah it things. is daunting <laughs> I've never listened back to one of my podcasts ever mm-hmm. like I just speak it into the air and I just <laughs> let it let go I let it go and let you know I'll defend myself if I have to or I'll explain something if I do but I just won't do it and you just saying that there to me I was like oh my god imagine, imagine watching back that with your cast members and knowing that you can't not be controversial because it's real life and Mm. it's what's happening but also the fact that there's people perceiving you (laughs) judging you about your reactions and then going on to a reunion show and actually discussing that in front of the person yeah in front of the vt of all the shit that went down Um, oh my god i'd die it's the accountability I just I and that it's funny you say that because it's become such a cliche on all the shows like you need to own your behavior you need to be accountable for what you did and they all say that like you know I've seen so many housewives across the different shows say like you film whatever you film then you watch it back months later and maybe you've moved on from so let's just say we've all filmed a scene early on in our our season where we all have a huge fight and then three episodes later we actually were cool and we're like it's grand that was that was what it was but then that first episode featuring that first fight plays out you really have those emotions and they come back up for you and everybody reacts and you're like oh my god will they make it to the third or fourth week where we get back together and we're fine and then you have to go to the reunion and relive it again and they play as you say the vt for the housewife and they show like the clip package to us the viewer and the in situ they show you the reaction shot of them on the couch in full glam being like oh yeah i called them a c word ah oh, that's so funny and then after that airs people have then decide what were they contrived enough do they seem like they've owned their behavior like it's just mm. this treadmill that you're on of like having to like do something watch it back do something watch it back and then also people seeing it what you've done months ago months later and giving you the thoughts on it then and being like yeah i, I was really rude that day huh? yeah like it's, yeah it's like it's bad really enough when weird. you have the fear over something without having to relive it time and time yeah. again months later particularly when they are drinking like yeah. you imagine going on a mad night out and it's filmed and then you're going to see it on camera six months later i'd be like oh, oh god that's no. not worth this wouldn't be worth them you'd want to be seriously strong mentally like they must do psych evals before that they have to yeah and mm. I think you do have to be a kind of person because like just let me talk my shit in the group chat you know what I mean like, yeah. just let me, <laughs> but it's the fact that you've to like the anxiety and the like the fear like if you were recording something you know you went out and you got locked last night and you know that they were recording yeah knowing that you can't see that until like oh no six months time oh, and it's out of your control as well because obviously they have editors and producers yeah. and stuff like this and they, and they try to make it Juicy. the most dramatic out of anything like they're not gonna keep the mundane bits yet or the the bits that sometimes might put it into a bit more context they might get rid of that altogether so you're left yeah. trying to explain what really happened and you don't want again go against the producers and because like you do hear of celebs or like stuff that happened on celebrity shows like C- cbb or whatever years later saying well actually what you didn't see was and then but people have this idea of you for years before you even get to have your say because you couldn't say it about them back then and it's 
Jesus, contracts. the mental torture of it, like. Yeah, I remember, like, because like, you're talking about CBB, like that iconic season in 2016 that was like Tiffany Pollard, Gemma Collins, Megan McKenna, like, what's her name? Stephanie Thingy and the Irish oh, yeah, guy. Like, Jeremy. All, <laughs> like, Donald, all, yeah. like, the amount of stuff that happened on that season, like, it was incredible. And I remember quotes like, that Gemma, we all have from that season. Yeah. Yes, and Gemma Collins had interviewed after and be like, do you know what? You see 40 minutes of a day. We're there for 24 hours. You don't see everything, honey. Like, you know, this idea, like reality stars love to be like, oh, it was the edit. And I'm like, I don't doubt for a second that editing is a cruel mistress. But there's also like, sometimes it can become this excuse. So like, mm. but yeah, I would be, that's the thing about like, you know, like we see ads, all these competition reality shows and do this and this. Yeah. And like, you always wonder what I do. And I'm like, I just wouldn't trust I wouldn't trust anyone to put me across the way I'd want it to be seen. Yeah. And it's just such a big risk to take no matter what the show is. literally putting your personality into somebody else's hands. Exactly. When, oh God, when you put it like that, it's it's a daunting prospect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, yeah. Um, ooh, thanks, for some, <laughs> yeah. Scare. I got real sinister there, didn't yeah. I? Um, for somebody who doesn't watch uh, Real Housewives, and obviously... You're that person. That's right. <laughs> The Real Housewives, and obviously people have, there are the people who love and thrive and like live off reality TV. And then there's the other half who think it's absolutely stupid that it's just, mm -hmm. it's tripe and it's chewing gum for the brain and they have no time for it. A lot of them being like cis men. Um, mm -hmm. oh. What's oh. the oh. crack oh. with <laughs> the husbands? Like, is there much involvement with the husbands? Do they, what do they make of the shower? Can you see what they really think of the shower? Are they all for it? Are they supportive? Are they involved a lot? Or because obviously it's housewives, so there's husbands involved. But a lot of them got their, got their got their leg up from yeah. the famous husband yeah. or the the, the baller. It's so funny because, well, there's two things. One, yes, you absolutely do see like husbands and significant others on the show. What's really funny is like the title is you know, real housewives of wherever. And so everyone's like, oh, so they're all married. And it's like, weirdly, no. the housewives <laughs> label is like sort of loosely applied. And I think sort of like almost deconstructed a bit where they're like, they're, what they're really saying is, no, they're just a bunch of women who will be considered housewives in a different decade, really. But here's what actually happens. And it gets to the point where the more certain shows go on, half of them are like, or if not more, or all like Divorced. on New York, there was one season where they were all single. And I was like, this is actually just sex in the city. Like yeah. this is not realize it's anywhere. But anyway, um, so the husbands do come up. It's interesting. Again, it's sort of city dependent, like on New Jersey, the husbands are much bigger part of the drama than they will be on Beverly Hills mm. on New York. They have sort of fallen by the wayside because few, very few of them are often in relationships on Atlanta. Certain husbands have felt really crucial to the show and some haven't. So example, Nene Leakes, who people would know, even if they've never watched a frame of Housewives, they have seen a meme of her because she truly has penetrated pop culture. Her long-term husband, Greg Leakes, died this year. And like when he died, so many people were like, God, he was always such a big presence on the program. And like, he clearly was like, in love with Nini and like every viewer was like, God, that's such a shame because we had gotten to know him. Whereas, mm. you know, <laughs> infamously sometimes someone will be dating someone who doesn't want to be on camera. And then that becomes an issue because the show was like, well, we need to see the yeah. husband or the yeah. boyfriend and they won't play ball. So they are a part of it. They're not the focus, but some of them get more involved than others. And sometimes like Potomac is a good example of like one of the women, Ashley Darby, her husband was being alleged to be like a sex pest and harassing people. And, you know, he was getting into it with like the other cast members, the other women and the other husbands on, on that city. So like on some shows, depending on who they're with and the kind of people they're with, their husbands do feature. And then sometimes it's just marriage is breaking down. So famously, yeah. Camille Grammer was on the early seasons of Beverly Hills, married to Kelsey Grammer of Frasier, for example, mm -hmm. like a huge like celebrity. household name celebrity. And everyone was like, this is so random that like Kelsey Grammer is like appearing on this and that his wife is there. And then it emerged at the end of the first season that he had been cheating on Camille for years and was in New York doing a play and basically sort of pushed Camille to do the show as a kind of a parting gift and also a distraction so that he could basically <gasps> yeah, get, you know, gosh, get rid of the yes. first wife or whatever number she was and move on to the new one. So like, you know, it's weird. How, and then a lot of people go on with their like, seemingly adoring husband and then the marriage falls apart before our very eyes so like there's no and <laughs> the ultimate housewives cliche as well is 
um, a couple having a viral renewal yeah, <laughs> at right. some point, and then the marriage goes tits up like a year or two later, and it's like, why would you have the fucking viral renewal? Yeah. That it's was like just asking for trouble. <laughs> when woman win, when a woman wins best a- actress at the Oscars, they generally divorce the next year. That's the yeah, yeah the, the, thing. the course. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting because it's it's like the men sometimes become the the housewives story. Like obviously we've got Erica Girardi now who is in a massive legal yeah. battle with her ex husband. There's so much going on there. You wouldn't even know bloody where to start as far as like what's like I tried not to follow it in the papers because I was like I actually just want to see it play out on TV. Mm, like yeah. I'm hearing all this noise and seeing all these tweets or whatever. But then you had Taylor from. Uh, season one was it season two that her so, so, Taylor, yeah so Taylor Armstrong was on the first few seasons of the show and in the second season so b- they filmed the second season and then before yeah. it actually aired her husband Russell Armstrong uh, died by suicide which shocked everybody to the point where there was talk of the show not airing the season at all and maybe cancelling the show and it was it was a really controversial thing in the US actually at the time and then the season aired and it emerged that on that season, Taylor slowly but surely was telling the women on camera that Russell was actually in fact beating her and that she was in a really, really awful situation of domestic violence and that Russell was also having money problems. So the show weirdly kind of gave context of what Taylor was going through for that year. And when they went to film the reunion, she kind of opened up about Russell's death and how that impacted her. So, I mean, there are very raw and very, difficult things to play out in the shows and they are tied to stuff like their husbands and their family life that that's kind of i don't want to say it's an extreme example because i don't want to <clears throat> i don't want to sound like i'm being like kind of stigmatizing towards something like suicide but it's just that's obviously such a, a difficult thing and that mm. that level of kind of intense raw stuff doesn't always come up but that is an example of how the shows really don't leave any there are no holds barred. And what's interesting, I mentioned that book, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned that book, Not All Diamonds and Rosé, a little while ago. And in that book, they interviewed Taylor Armstrong and she says that actually, when things are really bad with Russell, like, I mean, I don't want to say too much because it's domestic violence and it's awful. But she goes into one or two particular injuries that she got because of her husband and they were bad, like go to the hospital bad. Um, she was saying that filming the show was saving her bacon because there were people in her home. There were people mm. she could talk to. She had oh, she had people yeah. in her home more frequently versus being alone with her husband who was beating her. So, like, you never think that watching these fluffy no. shows. You never think that, like, this actually could help this person. And then I think it did sort of turn slightly that, like, people were really on Taylor's side, but then she was kind of crumbling a bit in the seasons yeah. following because she was grieving. And I think processing a hugely traumatic thing that had happened to her both in terms of what went on in the relationship and then how it ended. So like and a different then lifestyle. There was not, yeah. And then that's, and she had a small child as well. So like the way that played out was oftentimes hard to watch. And there have been storylines in all the cities where it's, it's gotten very dark and you kind of think, God, this is like yeah, really. real shit. Like, I mean, she's not on the show anymore, but Bronwyn, who was on Housewives of OC for a couple of seasons last year, they filmed their almost entire season was COVID because they started filming a month before COVID and then, California was hit really hard and Bronwyn had decided at the start of filming I'm going to get sober I've been an alcoholic for 15 years so you're watching this woman white knuckle it you know try not to drink during a pandemic in lockdown with her like five kids and her husband at home and then half of the season she's like oh my god I'm actually a lesbian I need to do it with sexuality like so you have these really intense things play out and they often sort of are they play out anyway but the cameras make them more real or they force them to like go somewhere they wouldn't have or they offer them a way to deal with something kind of difficult mm. yeah I think it's really that's what I mean I think it's, it can be anything from you know the big drama of the season is uh you know magazines putting a suitcase or a dog that wasn't returned <laughs> correctly or yeah. you know you're you're watching say Camille Grammer's full-on divorce happen and it was in that was no, I'm not going to say it was gas, but I think what was so interesting is because your her whole persona was like I'm Kelsey Grammer's wife. I don't know if you know. Yes, this, but her like, oh, thing okay. was like, I, I, I am wife. married to Kelsey, and it's a very hard life being married to someone so famous. And then that all like, went tits up. And then we as viewers get to be like, ha ha ha. But also, it's that thing of okay, but you as a person, like, how do you reinvent now? The thing, and that's the irony of it being called Housewives. So often, it's a show about women getting out from under the label of being mm. quote unquote just a homemaker there's nothing wrong with being a homemaker or a housewife on paper but it's often been a thing that 
has been used to keep women in one place or tell yeah. them that they can only do X because that's all they're kind of good for. Whereas weirdly, these shows for all the like flaws and like madness that happens, they are also shows that the women have to reinvent and pivot and go, well, what do I do now that I'm not married to that man now? Or mm-hmm. that might, I guess, I mean, people forget this as well. So like how's those OC started 2006? Yeah, it was an and old school. And a few school. shows emerged like, New York was 2008, I think Atlanta would have been 2008, 2009, and then Jersey came around. So, like, you know, the show started during a time of wealth and prosperity in America and around the world. And in 2008, when the financial crash hit, it actually impacted all the shows because they became shows about people with a lot of money losing money or having to, like, deal with things changing because they've lost money. So, like, weirdly, for all that we love the wealth, we love the glamour, we love the bitchiness, there's a lot of, like... (laughs) grit and perseverance that they have to kind of go through and there's a lot of like the house of cards falls quite easily a lot as well Mm, yeah i don't want to let you go before asking about spin-offs because i think that's something that if you guys are maybe maybe people you know listening here have watched absolutely everything um but aren't (laughs) particularly you know enthralled in a spin-off i uh, I've watched Vander so Vanderpump Rules was a spin-off of one of the characters in uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She was like a restauranteur. Is that what you call them? Restauranteur? Restauranteur, at least a Vanderpump who's Lisa like Vanderpump. It was kind of a stand up Beverly Hills, like posh British guy. So wealthy. Lots Just of so money. rich. <laughs> he loves to wear like, loves a high waisted jean and, and a revealing silk top of their boobs out. And so they did a whole spin-off based on one of her rest well, her chain of restaurants in LA. And the kind of goings on of the of the staff who works there, and it's I would say Vanderpump Rules is like the hills if they all stayed on TV and drank and did drugs. Like it's yeah. that kind of it's they're crazy. just a broken, like broken. haunted quality to everybody on that program. And that is a spin off of Housewives, but then that has gone on to be not so much now. It's kind of waned because I think that recent season art is good, but like that's a show with a real cult following and a following that's sometimes kind of separate to Housewives. There was a period where like. You'd see all these celebrities referencing how much they love Vanderpump Rules. It really caught on as a kind of this cold classic TV show. I think because with it, it was kind of what had happened was a producer had like been around Lisa and been around her restaurants because a lot of the stuff would be like her day to day and the fact that Mm -hmm. she has this empire with her husband and her husband's older, but it's okay because they're a partnership and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And a producer had gone to her restaurants and was like, okay, everybody here is really hot. Like, like smoking and she was like oh yeah well like kind of like only you know higher models and mm. or like and actors, actors. they're or, in LA they're all actors yeah. and models with day jobs so they're all gorgeous because that's the LA cliche like you go out to become to get like, discovered but yeah. then you end up waiting tables and bussing tables yeah because that's your that, side yeah. you go to auditions and then you have a coffee shop job so it's that yeah. kind of thing they're all they're all really photogenic and they all really want to be famous yeah okay, right. and like one so of, them- of course they agreed to this of course they mm-hmm. do. And like yeah. one of them had had an affair with one of the housewives' husbands, Jesus. which was yes. huge in the first season of the show. But I've never come across a show that like hits the ground running with like obscene drama that has actually happened. You're talking multiple affairs with best friends, with, you know, you know, possible different kind of like sexual relations like some guy like there's so many people that are being like accused of being gay quietly mm. and all this other kind of stuff like it hits everything if everything. you're looking for like just balls to the wall <laughs> i always say like i remember watching season one and being like this is just insane because everyone's so gorgeous and you're just like oh my god they're so hot and they're like doing photo shoots and everything because mm. lisa vanderbilt's big thing is about like she sells the staff as well as the restaurant so it's right. like you come it's like you bring your mistress <coughs> to to sir and you bring your wife to one of her other like posher restaurants Villa Blanca and it was like but you bring the mistress to sir you know and oh that's the way that they did sir, it sir by the way stands for sexy, sexy unique, unique restaurants, restaurants. <laughs> oh my god I always love that and fact I'm like, sh- that I love so that weird. and like <laughs> even with the uniforms like she makes them wear pieces of cloth right okay. and they have yeah. to and the guys have to be topless at oh. certain points and it's real like you know when she's doing her like her she does pride floats and it's like you have to like wear speedos you have to wear this outfit like she gets her stylist involved it's real like if this was a man what the fuck yeah <laughs> at but, least the uh, man was waiting for her lawsuit yeah yeah exactly but it's real it's just so kind of exciting because you're like here's like a younger crowd and they're all desperate to be on the telly like mm. they are desperate yeah, yeah. so it's an interesting a spin-off because it's so little to do with Housewives and Lisa is a factor in it and it's fun seeing a different side of Lisa Vanderpump who in the Housewives Boss. world is kind of iconic and a certain kind of character but she really is kind of 
she's not the lead of that show in a no. way. And then there have been a lot of spinoffs. I mean, it's funny because sometimes they're just like, okay, so and so is getting married. So here's four episodes about it. Like, yeah, at the moment, there's a spinoff with Portia Williams from Housewives of Atlanta, and it's about her kind of. <laughs> she got with this guy who was married to her supposed friend and they got together seemingly less than a month after the other divorce went through and she'd only just gotten broken up with another guy. So it's about her kind of new relationship, but it's not, it doesn't have the flair of Housewives of Atlanta because it's not the whole cast. So the spinoffs are a little hit and miss. They can be fun if you're into a certain person and you want to don't like- Don't be tardy was huge. Yeah, so don't be tardy about now. I've never watched that because I really loathe Kim Zolciak Beerman. People love her. I've just always found her- so objectionable but they're off they're fun if you like that person and you want to see the new context like manzo with children was really big and it spun off this one woman from houses in new jersey kill i manzo i'm all about my family she's a total like new jersey cliche so like mm. her show is her family and the antics they get up to so like there's stuff i mean that's the thing it's just such a rabbit hole like mm. yeah you can just watch the one city but then you might watch the spin-offs and then you're mm. like oh let me try this city so it just shows you how far the tendrils of the web of Housewives go. I think you should do. So, you know, um, with Game of Thrones and even the, I don't know if you watched Kane on RTE. Yeah, yeah, They do out these family trees. I think you should do like a snakes and ladders type map. (laughs) Yeah, oh my God. Housewives, just for like for Housewives and me and like the whole sponsored by Hey You, get Hey You to pay you more money for it. And then you have like, you hear that? You that? (laughs) You have branches that come out and then there's the spin-offs and then just a little blow yeah. up on it. That, Cause it'd be a good explainer for somebody like me who just wants to start out and doesn't know where to start, but still is lost. So yeah. trying to explain a map, like a family tree sort of thing, that would be amazing. I think I think you could do a really good a one. A giant poster in someone's home. Yeah, yeah. I'd definitely. I'd put on my work, and like, I think you could do like a little honorable mentions to like things like What Happens in the Abbey, which was a spin-off yeah. of, it was like a copycat Vanderpump Rules that never took off, right? Okay, and it's or funny because they're more the desperate. show. The show Lindsay, the show Lindsay Lohan did for one yeah. season MTV was I so clearly so based on Vanderpump Rules, and I remember they like they asked her that, and she was like, "I know Lisa Vanderpump very well, but I've never watched the show." I was like, "Well, one of your producers has." Yeah, and I don't even know what accent <laughs> Lindsay said that in because if you watched. Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. She had like four different accents. Yeah. Right. At one Her point, she said, I, "I cut people off like I'm Putin." I was like, "Sorry." Oh, what is your that accent? And she was phase. Like, uh, yeah. You know, if you want to work in my beach house, ha- I was like, "What? The- you speak English? Like what?" And then she'd be <laughs> really American, or she'd have a fake British accent, yeah, and then that was weird. she would talk like. Russian like, woman. I was like, she was trying sorry, to be Greek, and that was so funny. And she was like, "Oh, I just love my island lifestyle." And she'd be like ch- cooking. She's like, "I'm a big cook," and I'm like, "What's this accent, girl? Like, what's going on?" Um, are all the spin-offs available on Hey You? Of yeah, so, Housewives. Yeah. Yeah, all the Housewives spinoffs are on Hey You. Like, they're all, I mean, it can, I would say just for yourself, if you're trying to like watch it in tandem with the main show, mm. maybe just do some Google around the year the spinoff came out and okay. the season you're watching. Cause sometimes they're like, Spoilers. it's a spinoff tied to season five of One City because okay. that's when that person got married or whatever. Right. But okay. you, I mean, so yeah, but you can dip in and out and they're there. It's nice knowing they're there because you kind of know, well, I'm here in my Housewives of Wherever journey. So let me go and do the four spinoff episodes. Because oftentimes those spinoffs air between seasons. Mm. Do you know, as a whole, like the Porsche thing is airing now because Housewives of Atlanta isn't back for a little while. So like I'm watching it because it's kind of like a placeholder. And I like Porsche. <laughs> so if you were, had just watched the most recent season of Atlanta, you could try that. Because you're like, well, I know this is sort of this person here until I get the rest of the women back. This is why months. I need your map. And they <laughs> should put it on, you know, the way that like, that Netflix and like Hey You and all these streaming services have like little holes. They should have like, because you're the first subscriber ever, you should have your <laughs> own little Connor Bean map. Yeah. A Connor Bean map. This is Connor Bean <laughs> about Connor. He was our first subscriber. He was a <laughs> website. We sponsor him all this. And then here is Connor's map. That would be sick. <laughs> that would be amazing. I'll pitch it. I'll oh, pitch okay. it. Okay. Jen's Jen's really 2022 project. She's a cell. I'm, I'm, she's a cell. I, I'm your. I'm a Stell, I'm your age, I'm your secretary, I gotta go. Hey, 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 you, it's a Stell. I got you a <laughs> new viewer. Her name is Jen. She really wants, I, I gave her a map. She doesn't know where to start. Oh, God. And she's hooked. I, I got them all. You know what they're like. They watch one episode and they're <laughs> Oh, my God. You could, e- oh, my God. You could even branch out. You could do your own spin off. A real Housewives <laughs> Monopoly board. 
Penny's <laughs> always buy that shit in for Christmas. There's so many Connor different versions. Connor Pump Rules, my yeah, restaurant. Connor, I'll open oh a restaurant God. in Dublin. <laughs> I've said this to you, Connor, a million times that like I would like I would beat you over the head to try and do a Patreon with other reality shows because I would probably be your number one subscriber. Yeah. <laughs> so, you'd be the first I ever would subscriber. Be zero, zero, okay, one. okay. Challenge yeah. accepted. Patreon zero. Patient <laughs> like zero. I would be obsessed with that because what has been funny just before we go is that Below Deck for the first time has overtaken Housewives as the most mm. watched Bravo show. Mm. Now, I'm very possessive over Below Deck because I was an OG watcher. So I'm really like, <laughs> you know, like don't come in and ruin for me. You yeah. weren't there. I know all the travia, or travia, trivia. I know every single cast member and they change every mm. cast, you know? So I'm like, I know every yeah, single thing. Yeah, it's every a weird format that way, yeah. Um, but I think it's interesting now because this is the first time that any of them have been dethroned as like the, the number one watch i right. think it's funny too because in the u.s the way they like obviously ratings are still ratings for shows but like numbers that shows get across the board are they're down because there's way more things to watch at any one mm. time and also people watch stuff online but like of those bravo shows like below deck is absolutely the biggest one and i think it's just i've noticed that it just appeals to a different kind of audience i'm like <laughs> Men watch i have it. these two friends called brendan and dan and they do a podcast called come through queen and they mainly focus on housewives and other reality shows in that vein and they always joke that like the hets love below deck like, ah, yeah show <laughs> and, <it is laughs> and i think it's just the format you know like it's it's kind of upstairs downstairs but set on a luxury boat so like it's that kind of thing of like it's a lot of staff on on these luxury cruises who are like horny young people copping off each other and then you've got the older guy who's the captain or the older woman who's the captain and then every week you've got these rich people coming on board so it's it's just a completely different world but i have noticed over time that like the fan base for that is as obsessive as housewives it's just a different part for me strand i mean i'm impressed <laughs> with anyone who watches below deck and housewives and then like say the bachelor and this and that i'm just like whoa and people who do love island every year i'm like that's six episodes a week yeah how yeah. do you have time <laughs> yeah i suppose you just kind of make it your routine but um yeah yeah no i think i think it's what's interesting about men and this is what me and Jen say a lot of the times about our podcast is that like sometimes there's a cap on it because men won't listen to women like like they won't listen yeah. to a, a woman-led podcast um hetman won't listen to like a woman-led podcast but then when it comes to like say other podcasts you have that women will listen to men do you know in that yeah. kind of way so yeah. like yeah. when it comes to below deck you have like captain lee who's obviously like the anchor of the whole series who it started with captain sandy will never have that following but um you've that and then you also have like deck work guys are scrubbing things are going wrong with boats people you know this kind mm. of like mechanical side of things it's like it's tough hard work it's labor and also think, shagging and yeah. drinking you know yeah and i think too it's a it's a generalization a bit of a cliche but that cliche of like the straight couple where the man wants to watch this and the woman wants to watch this and the cliche is the man wants the month football and the woman wants to watch real housewives now we yeah. all know that that's a fucking stereotype but yeah. i do think a show like below deck is kind of oh me and my missus can watch this because i yeah. can get the, whereas i think a lot of guys if you will see like kardashians and housewives as this kind of mm. background noise bullshit that they'd never engage in so i mean it is what it is i mean that's one of the reasons i love being gay i'm like i can just watch whatever i want it's kind of like the, <laughs> what, what's that show and i i won't be able to remember the name of it it's like a load of um boats going out to sea to fish and it's full of men love it is it called perfect catch or something like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that mix with real housewives and that's why it's kind yeah, of that's <laughs> that's why it's I, need yeah. I need to really get into blow deck i think i think i would oh, like it it's just on. i am ironically i am daunted by it the way people are daunted by housewives because there's so many seasons of of blow deck and it's been off so i'm always like oh god and the thing is i love doing the podcast but it does mean <laughs> I'm like spending so much of my week talking about these shows as well as watching them. And then I mm. love Drag Race and I listen to Drag Race podcasts. And I'm like, it's a lot of fucking reality TV in my life already. <laughs> yeah, <a lot> <laughs> it's like, the choice. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was me. I started with Mediterranean because Mediterranean launched the year that um, I think it was like one or two years, maybe it was more current. So I was like, right, I'm going to start with Mediterranean. So I actually yes. went backwards and I talked about it on Instagram. And it was before I went um traveling but that's just because it was like one of those things that got updated so i could watch and i was like oh this is my little piece of like normality and mm. kind of like you know while i'm in the middle of an actual you know desert here but it was kind of one of those things and it was a follower who had said to me she was like oh you know you can start below deck from season one and it's just carnage like you don't even have to because mm. med was a bit more current um but i will say to anybody out there who is thinking who's after getting their whole 
Housewives buzz here now and they're thinking about Below Deck you can start from series one Below Deck even the quality it's gas to watch it kind of come up and have it's like it's moments and as we all know I'm like biggest Below Deck fan I got a PR package that Jen got me in on thanks for that hun you're welcome hun. you're welcome <laughs> but uh, yeah I think um, I think these shows are just they're just a bit of fun like they're a bit mm. of crack they're a bit of light when things are when you're watching your kins and when you're watching your like you know successions are really heavy sh- yeah, it's yeah. Really not heavy but you know what I mean like when you're watching these well, kind of heavy shows and they require a lot yeah. of brain power and you can like I mean I know so many people like some who've been on the pod and some who don't who just put on random old episodes of Housewives as sort of a comfort blanket or mm. in the background because they kind of know what happens but it's like comfort TV and like that came up so much the last year of doing the podcast people starting it in the depths of lockdown because they just needed like an escape and a shift in gears and obviously we're sort of back and forth at certain things around lockdowns and pandemics and that but like even with life kind of back to normal there is something about how these shows are kind of comforting mm-hmm. that is like there's you know there's something really appealing about it's that. a nice escape about them isn't there like it's it's really it's just so far away from your own real life that you're able to just get engrossed in and just take your mind off everything else exactly particularly the ones that are set in the us because i think i think irish but we watch american reality shows we're like we should never do that yeah. which is why we're so weird about irish reality shows that's why yeah. it that's that long like we're like no we'd watch it if it's not in our back garden but yeah. want it to be next <laughs> yeah. door. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly connor thank you so much uh this has been very informative and i'm actually dying to get into it now i'm that's that's it i'm I'm in there. Next time you speak to me, I'll be like, and what did you think about this? Uh, yeah. You'll be like, yeah, who exactly. is this bitch? Girl, Jen, be on you get a wording, and you're like, no, 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 I have something to say. <laughs> I want to be, I will be on, on Housewives, Housewives and Me before December 2022. I will. What? Challenge <laughs> accepted. All right, well, thank you very much for having me, and I'll, having me, and I'll see you for your Housewives and Me interview very soon. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, not that soon. Give me about six months. <laughs> thanks a million, Oh, you'll be Connor. surprised. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Thanks a million, Connor. Isn't he just fabulous? Oh, I could listen to God. And I do listen. Like, I, I genuinely... But we did. We spoke to him for over two hours. I, like, I love him. Even after that interview, we still went on for an hour. I, I'm a, I could <laughs> talk to him Could have been an it. episode. <laughs> Yeah, and really, he said that he was like could have recorded that for the juice for yeah for the yeah. Patreon. Um, thanks a million for listening. We really hope you enjoyed and got some info out of this. I for one can't start can't start can't, can't wait. wait to start Real Housewives. I think, I think I'm going to go with the Beverly Hills and just going to be real basic. Absolutely. And guys, yeah. if you are not a Housewives listener, but you're thinking maybe maybe something else, maybe I need something else. Below deck, below deck gang, and our Patreon, our Patreon, our Patreon, our Patreon. Yes. Um, also, well, any links to Connor's socials I will put in the blur. Blur. The blur. 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 <laughs> That's going to be stuck in your head. Uh, next time you hear from us, it will be a best of episode, which we'll get onto the Instagram and ask you what the best of was. What, what your best really of enjoy? moments were? What did you think was great? Exactly. Uh, we're going to have a bit of time off now because we've already pre recorded our first of January one, which is leaving in 2021. Whoop! For your listening it's the sound of the police. We actually didn't even, when we recorded that, because we're not good at pre-recording, uh, point to the fact, like, or say Happy New Year, or sing old oh, I don't think people will care. No, yeah, no, I don't either. think they're they'll They're probably care. dying. Probably dying. Just yeah. getting a bit of fresh air of, yeah, they're gonna be like, of a New Year's week. Yeah, girls rattled on for a little bit yeah, too long. Exactly. Yeah. On a Zoom. On a Zoom. On a Zoom. Yeah. Uh, thanks a million for all of your support throughout the year. We hope you have a lovely Christmas and we will chat to you in the new year. And we love you. Bye. Bye.